Good is Sunday, all right? Yeah, 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 yeah. good, good, good. Percy Jackson. Good. It's energizer. Oh, good. Right, it's been a nice. This is like day three, right? You've been here a while, so day yeah. Four. Yeah. Four. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I'm glad I energized you. That was fun. That was a good. That was a good session. Thank you very much. Thank you. So James, we know that the movie is not actually a fan's favorite, and like by the seven minute clip that we just saw the show has a lot of potential to be actually and i really want to know uh you as a direct mm -hmm. as a director what kind of details did you have to pay attention to to get a result like that i i know it's a lot but like, a lot. I mean, how many you got i mean talk a little bit about because that as a please. director you're responsible for everything so yeah. you've got to find the cast you've got to tone it you've got to design it you've got to build it i think for me I've been doing a lot of books recently. The last show I did was called Mysterious Benedict Society, also a book. Uh, and that, I think, is partly because I like taking a page and then reading it in my head and then putting that idea into the world. And this is the same with Percy I've, you know, Percy Jackson I've known for 10, 15 years. And so I kind of knew if I were to make the world of Percy Jackson what it would look like. And I think the first thing you need to do is work out what that world is because the most important thing about the show is you believe the world. But it, there's a world in which Percy's mum can say to him, your dad is a god, and that feels okay. <laughs> that is quite a hard thing to set up tonally, because you have to look back to films like E.T. So Spielberg does that, a brilliant job of grounding the emotion, the reality, but there's an alien in it. And you totally believe that alien is real, and that's a real thing. And we have a similar challenge here, whereby we have a whole world of Greek gods and monsters which runs, runs alongside our normal world of school problems and bullies and friendships and stuff. And so for me, the world had to be something whereby that sentence about your dad is a god felt possible. And that was the biggest challenge to begin with. And once you got that right, everything else kind of falls into place. Thank you. Wait, real Hi. quick. Real yes. Quick. Hi, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. I know. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. That's good of you. Thank you. So, what, are, uh, what was like the, uh, for you the biggest challenge to kind of bringing the world of Percy Jackson to life? Well, it's slightly to do with the responsibility that everyone knows it, <laughs> and therefore everyone has their own opinion of what it should look like. Um, it was great having Rick around because he obviously created it and so I felt very pleased when he liked what we were doing and one of the greatest things is when he sent me he watched the first cut and he really liked it and he sent me a lovely email about it and that was very satisfying because you know it's his world and it's his thing it's been his for a long time and so to see it come to life in a way he liked was just very satisfying um, challenges wise yeah it's world building world building is always a challenge um, casting is hard but we, had, we got lucky because Walker's incredible and, and our end's incredible and uh, Leia's incredible um, but yeah, it was that. It was the idea that people kind of know this world really well. And so you feel a responsibility to get it right. And that was, that, that's, that's not easy. But at the same time, I was confident I knew what I'd like it to look like. The scripts are fantastic. That's always a good start. They felt like they're the books or extension of the books. Uh, obviously, naturally, some of my two were both written by Rick and John. So that's great. So that's very helpful. <laughs> but that carries on for the season. You'll see that that does carry on totally. So it's the challenge of the, of the world and then the, t and the tone. Those are the two hardest parts. What are some of the challenges of... Uh working with uh, such a young cast. Mm. And what's the best thing about working well, with Well, the best thing is the, also the worst thing, which is basically they're quite, they're not, you know, they're not adults. So they don't have the attention span of adults and they just muck around all the time and they just like, <laughs> but that's good because that brings energy. So the other part of it is they, you know, we have long, we work long days. There are certain rules working with kids. You can't work that many days, but only hours rather, but you do and you work up to the, the last minute you possibly can. So it's physically quite demanding, I think, for kids. Um, so you have to kind of maintain a sense of fun on set. It has to be a fun place to be. Um, luckily, they're great friends as well as good actors, and they that developed throughout the entire season. And they did work close, and they remain close, and they hang out together, and it's in a real way. Like they hang out weekends, which is fantastic. Um, but at the same time, the important part is they they're like kids. So unless they eat, they they, they they flag. They get a bit tired, and then you have to remember we're still filming this incredibly intense scene, and you've got to get your energy levels up. And so we often do like jumping jacks, running around, things, you know, like exercise. Break your brain up and so we did a lot of that and that was always quite fun um so yeah you know, they're, you know but they are i deal with actors of that age as i do with every actor it doesn't really matter to me because they take direction as well as anyone else does they listen very well you just have to remember that they are 12 or 13 and so sometimes you have to be clear <laughs> in your just try instructions uh and but other than that is no real difference they are excellent actors and that is as, as, when you cast people in uh, casting and we did these kind of testing situations sort of chemistry reads basically you look for that you look for them listening to you listening is really important most people often don't listen and in an actor the most important thing i think often in scene work is when they're not talking like what are they doing and often kids don't listen 
So, and you go, no, no, you, you know, I know you're thinking about your next line. Don't do that. Just listen to the person talking to you. And that, if I see that, I know it's always a good sign. <laughs> now we saw, um, we saw this cool capture the flag scene. Yes, episode two. Yes. Yeah, which is um, like very important in sure. the books. Can you talk about like what directing that is like? Because there's <laughs> many moving parts. And yeah, it's a big one. I mean, it also has a huge number of extras. That whole yeah. scene has, you know, is a, a, on both sides are like 60 kids. And so that's a lot of people in a lot of... Like anything in life, when you have a lot of extras, they, things get complicated, and you know you do those big shots first to get them out of the way, and you kind of pass it down to the smaller moments. But because it really, you know, catch the flag is really this side, and Percy's interaction with that, with Clarice is the main part of that. So that's what I was focused on in a way that I think a lot of the show is seen from Percy's point of view. So I was really keen that put the capture the flag sequence, as big as it is at the beginning, it essentially becomes what happened to Percy that day. <laughs> And that's what it is, that he goes off because of what Annabeth says, and then Clarice finds him, and it becomes a chance whereby Clarice kind of forces him to be good at sword fighting, because he is naturally good at this. And that's like, that whole sequence, he kind of gets better. You saw it, right? So by the end, he's actually really good, which is great. And because obviously, he's just a kid who's barely hold, held a sword before, and, it, and he starts off like this, you know, not, not knowing what to do. Um, so it's, there's a kind of story in the action. I, do, I always think that action needs narrative. Without it, you just don't care. And so it's important as a story within the action. And that story's about, this is Percy learning his ability, which is great. And so that's what that's all about to me. It was a fun thing to shoot. We shot it by the water. You'll see by the end, the water starts to come in. So we had a slight issue with tides. <laughs> but it was fine. Um, I looked at the charts for tides a lot these last few weeks to shoot and making sure we had the right, because that tide moves a lot. And you have to you'd be very aware of the tide being there or being there. So we had to be kind of careful with that. Um, but the, by the time we came to shoot that, they'd, they'd rehearsed the stunt team many times over. So to actually the actual physically shooting stuff, all, all it takes, we just got it right every time. And the choreography worked pretty great straight off the bat because they'd been rehearsing it a lot. And that's the key thing to any choreography of fights, particularly, is rehearse it. So you get it on the day, you haven't got time to get it around the day normally. So. No, it's fun, it was fun though. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, oh God. Um, what's it like uh, directing a scene using the volume as oh. opposed to like it's not you know. really different i mean yeah sometimes it's complex like in terms of like because the space we're shooting in outside the map for example is larger than the space we had for the volume you have to shoot one way and then spin the entire set and then move to another part of that same area you can't it's, it's not big enough so you have to then move around and doing that the world has to turn around so Things that were on the stage are now in the background, and there are things that were on stage have to move around. So you have to have a, have a really good sense of spatial awareness and like map reading almost. Well, like thinking about it as a map, 2D map from above, and remembering if that's gone there and that's not over there. That stuff is hard because you either got that, or you don't got that. <laughs> and that's one of those things. So luckily, I like maps, so I'm so okay. But that was a challenge because that is a difficult thing to do to reorientate that that um, the fountain you're sitting by, change position twice during that scene. So, at, depending on which way you're shooting. So that got really complicated, that took us a while. So, but other than that, there's no difference really, because it is really, as ever with filming, about the performance and the cold face. You're right there with the actors, and just, that's all it is. That's the moment you're trying to get. And then, the technical stuff, hopefully you worked out prior. And then the acting is just what you get on the day. And so, yeah, normally, the, so there's no difference. I, just, I said, I do like the volume. I love being on it in terms of like, for your mental health. Because if you're on the blue screen all day, <laughs> It's really not, and green screen's even worse, really bad. Blue screen's quite bad. But when I was in the interior Met for the whole couple of days we shot that for, it did feel like in the dead I'd been in a museum. It did not feel like I'd been on a stage because it's so convincing. Even though the volume's only supposed to work for the camera to show it's on, it does have a sense of presence anyway. It's naturally just lit and it re feels real and a real space. And so at the end of the day, you don't feel like you've been on a blue screen with a headache. You feel like you've been in a museum. So it's a nice place, nice place to spend the day. So that actually, was, actually for that, it's very helpful. So it does really work when it works well in those kind of side spaces, really beautiful. I had a question. Yeah. So we know what the final product looked like. We heard about how it was working on it. How did you get this job? Talk <laughs> this film. I mean, with Christ I think Christopher Columbus did the first film, or the he did. first two, and you know, he, he had a pretty promising uh, directorial career. You have a pretty promising directorial career. But how did you, did you pitch for this? Or like, were they, you approached? That's a great question. Yeah, I think I was offered it. They are, they wrote, they sent it to me, and I've been doing. I did done Benedict study beforehand. Yeah, you've I've been doing stuff like this, and you know, I did 
movies whereby I like, like my last movie is Dora and Natalia Gold which was an adventure movie like Indiana Jones kind of stuff like so I like doing adventure stories and I've always wanted to do something like this um, and I've always loved Greek mythology and, and historian I did a degree in history at university so I like history so this is the kind of thing that I knew I knew the history of it I just you know you use words like Sisyphean and tantalizing these are Greek <laughs> words you know what I mean so that part of it felt very accessible to me and you, you know as a director you kind of need to know what you're going to do because you spend your entire time answering questions from about a billion people every day. So all you have to do is know what you want to do. And that sounds easy, but it really is not easy. You have to know exactly what you want all the time. And with this, I kind of knew I would, because I knew it really well, and I liked the world. I knew what I wanted to be and what I wanted to feel. And so in that case, you can't help but go, of course I'll do this, it's great. So yeah, they very much, I met Dan and John quite early. And that's also that thing where when you talk to people who are the creators of the show and you have the same mindset, you have the same sense of what this could be, the scale of it, the importance of it, how you have to get it right, has to be adjusted by the source material, and all that stuff is really like a great conversation whereby you go, okay, we are talking the same language here. That's really important because you spend a lot of time with these people for the next year or two years, <laughs> so you've got to get it right, you know. So one thing is that you have to be a really good judge of that situation. Uh, and generally, I've been okay at that. But with this one, I totally thought it from the very answer. I just knew they were gonna, these guys had a great idea. They're going to do it really well. And the books had a, were going to give us incredible thoughts to do a lot of stuff with, which is you know, exciting. And so that's why now I'm, I'm so pleased to be able to share it with people because we were going to think for ages. And so it's so nice to get it out there. And so, yeah, it's great. Today it was just fantastic. <laughs> See people actually react to that stuff. It's just the best. Really fun. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Cheers, guys. Have a good rest of your day. You too.